When I first came up with the idea of having my own blog, I thought rather than using a standard provider, I'd have my own hosted environment and host my own web server and run the blog from there. This gives me the opportunity to use the uh, server for other things and it also gave me an opportunity to, to do a bit of digging and learning into uh, setting up a LAMP stack. Having my own environment up and running was uh, very successful and a great learning opportunity. However, the environment uh, had gotten out of date and the uh, Ubuntu version was no longer supported. So it's now time to do an update. Thinking through the whole thing, the conversation with myself went something like this. So my mission now is to set up a new virtual machine using DigitalOcean Droplet and migrate the old server onto there. This should be quick, simple and easy. Let's build a virtual machine, you said. It'll be quick and easy, you said. Yes, it did take a little longer than I expected, but lots of good learning and real good, really good geek points. Yeah, it does mean that we can use it for all kinds of clever stuff and get creative. Yes, yes, actually, that gives me an idea for another project. Save that. Let's do this one first. True. True. Yeah. With my plan to migrate my old virtual server onto a new one and upgrade the version of Ubuntu that everything's running on, I first need to talk about my host. My hosting provider is a company called DigitalOcean. Similar to uh, Amazon and many other cloud providers, they create virtual machines, they refer to them as droplets, and uh, have other services such as virtual storage, uh, they call it volumes, and you can think of this as being like a virtual USB drive. Do check out the extra documentation provided by DigitalOcean. Links in my uh, blog post. As always with the significant project, it's worth having a plan in advance. One could do the migration entirely using database backups, file copies, and uh, other old, old school ways of doing things. The easiest way to do things is to use a WordPress plugin. The one I'm going to use is called All-in-One WP Migration. This plugin allows you to back up everything into a single file on the old environment and then upload it to the new one. DNS records are like a phone book. They'll what change roman-halliday.com into an IP address that machines connect to to view the website. A day or two before migration, set the TTL values in your DNS records for each impacted hostname to refresh each hour. At the start of the day for migration, drop it down to one minute. Remember that this is set in seconds, so one minute is 60 seconds, 3,600 3, seconds is one hour, and your normal going rate is going to be more like 86,400 seconds for 24 hours. Okay, it's the day of migration. We set our TTL records to refresh uh, an hour before for a couple of days and then this morning we'd set it to refresh every 60 seconds. Before making any changes, it's always a good idea to check your existing configuration, understand how everything is set up on your existing environment and make backups. To manage the backups in DigitalOcean, the easiest thing to do is to create a volume. In your pa control panel for DigitalOcean, go to Volumes. Quickly get an understanding of how much disk space you're going to need in your volume. You can do this by using df-h as a command. In my case, I can see that I've only really used uh, 2.6 gigs of a 22 gig drive. I'll create a volume of only, say, 5 gigs. As you configure your volume, you can choose which droplet to connect it to in the first instance, give it a name, and then you can select to manually format and mount it. Once you've selected your options, click Create Volume and wait a moment for everything to get configured. You get some handy documentation filling in the, uh, the names of things come up. All you have to do is paste the commands in and run them. It takes no time at all to create the volume and uh, format it. Once the volume is created and mounted, you can copy all of your files onto it. Go through and pick out your key directories, uh, things like uh, your ETC for configuration options. It's worth backing up things like root, the var which contains all of the web locations and websites. You can do a MySQL ba a backup of all of your databases or just key ba databases. The last thing to backup and most important is the actual WordPress site. The easiest way to do this is to use all-in-one WP migration. This installs easily as a plugin. It's got lots of documentation on its website and um, it allows you very quickly to export the whole site to a file. Uh, you can choose not to export things like spam comments and you can select file and then you just have to wait.
it'll create a file that you download. This one's quite large because it's got a lot of it, a lot of data in it. Let's speed this up a little. Once we've done all of our preparation, you can create a new droplet. This is really easy using DigitalOcean. You can search for many different options, including a WordPress option. Once you've selected the WordPress option that will pre-configure and pre-organize some applications, you can then go through the other options. For a small web server, you only need the basic shared CPU. Once you've picked all of your options, click the Create Droplet button and it'll take a couple of minutes to uh, put everything together. The next thing to do is connect to your new droplet and start doing all of the configuration options for it. For the initial configuration, once you're connected to the machine, it comes up and gives you a lot of options, including some, uh, some setup scripts. These are really handy to work through. Do double check the documentation before following these steps. Before configuring and changing anything, I opted to install all the possible updates and then we'll do a reconnect afterwards to get the configuration script. Update your DNS record so that the host name now points to the new IP address. Once everything's ready to go, it's just a case of answering the questions that are your given, such as giving the host a name. In this case, I've gone for my datablog.roman-holiday.com name. Then you fill in some other things, email, username, password, blog title. One handy thing that uh, the configuration does is use Let's Encrypt to give, your to give your blog SSL certificates. Now that you've got a WordPress instance up and running and you can connect to it, once everything is configured, you can use the web interface to log into your new blog. My recommendation is to install all updates and update the WordPress software to the latest version. This way, everything will match what we backed up from the original host. Once that is done, install the latest version of all-in-one WP migration. Once it's installed, we just need to import our site. Because the backup file was so large, I needed to change some settings for Apache. Apache by default limits the file size that you can upload. This limit can be uh, overridden by using a .ht access file. You can copy these lines from my blog. Once those changes are made, the maximum upload file size should be visible in the all-in-one WP migration plugin. Now you can select your file and import it. It'll take a little while to upload the file. Well, we can speed that up. It'll give you a warning about overwriting your existing website. Since there's nothing on there, we can accept this without worry. And then we'll wait for it to do its magic. Again, I'll speed this up a little because this takes some time. You can now visit your blog and see all of the articles have now been migrated and available. It's now time that we can restore any backup files we like from the volume that we created earlier. This can be things like documents, other sites, or anything else that we've got on the old host. Everything is now happily sitting on the new host, so we can adjust the time to live on the DNS record. The last thing to do is to drop the old droplet. Only do this when you're completely happy with your migration. I've now successfully migrated my blog to a new droplet. I hope that this video and blog post are useful to other people.